What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Now, I've had a lot of comments telling me, Marcos, Glacier is absolutely broken, how do I beat it, it keeps beating my team, I'm super weak to Trick Room, how do I take on this Pokemon? Well, I figured today would be a good day to actually cover this topic and list a couple of Pokemon that are really common in the format that you can put onto your team and reliably help you beat Glacier with proper board positioning. Uh, and I'm also going to be going over some absolutely heat picks, some off-meta stuff that I like to run personally. But yeah, if you guys find this video helpful at any point in time or enjoy it, do me a favor, leave a like and it, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer the comment question of the day, what do you think about Glacier? Is it busted? Is it too strong? I personally think it's a little bit too strong, but it's something we can't handle uh, with proper team building, you know? But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's try to shoot for 200 likes today. Standard Glacier set, you know, just max HP, max attack, four defense, brave nature, zero speed IVs. It's got 30 speed, so it's actually a very scary Pokemon. It's able to speed tie with Amoongus, which would otherwise check it pretty reliably. And it pairs well with Tapu Fini. Defensively, they cover each other very well. On top of that, uh, it defends Glacier from burns, so keep that in mind going forward in the video. But yeah, Glacier is a very powerful Pokemon. They gave it way too much coverage, in my opinion. I don't think it had any business learning close combat or max steel spike. I think that when you compare it to Spectrier, uh, Glacier's coverage is a bit much. So Ice Core Crash, Protect, Close Combat, High Horsepower is the standard set at the moment. They like to run Weakness Policy and self proc it with like a Brick Break with the Dust Clops or something. There are a lot of ways of self procking your Weakness Policy or even just allowing your opponent to proc it is pretty reliable for Glacier because it has a stat spread of 100 HP, 130 Defense, and 110 Special Defense. If you Dynamax this thing, it's pretty difficult to knock it out not giving it a Weakness Policy, uh, which is why I think one of the most uh, one of the most reliable ways of beating Glacier is sort of just stuffing it, denying it from getting any KOs until the Dynamax ends, and then from that point on it becomes a lot more manageable. How do we do that? Well, we'll get into that later on in the video, but we'll start off with probably the most common check to Glacier, and that is Metagross. Max HP, Max Attack, Metagross, Iron Head, Stomping Tantrum, Ice Punch, Protect is the standard set with your own weakness policy. Now, Metagross is a very common Pokemon in the format. It's top 10 in usage, and if we look at it, the... Well, actually, let me not look at the common Metagross. Let me look at my custom set. If we have it 1v1 a Glacier, uh, the Glacier and the Metagross are very capable of activating each other's Dynamax. However, um, if both of them are Dynamaxed, your Metagross will be able to get off a max Steel Spike first, granted their Trick Room isn't up, and you'll be doing between 37 to 44% of their health, uh, which means that the attack they'll be hitting you back with will be at plus 2, however, you will also be at plus 1 defense, which means that overall, you're, it's still manageable. A max Quake, since it's not stab, will only be doing 50%, so you will likely win the 1v1 since that next hit will bring you up to plus two defense and then they're only doing 44 so if there's no trick room you're likely going to win that 1v1 uh if you know if you're at plus two your max steel spike is going to be doing or if you're at if they end up giving you a weakness policy which they should your max steel spikes at plus two so even dynamax you're threatening to ko them so under trick room they could have plus two and you could have like no defense right and they're only going to be doing 74% to 88%, which means that if, if you're under Trick Room and your Metagross isn't burned, and they give you your weakness policy when you Dynamax, you have a very high chance of knocking them out where they have no chance of knocking you out. And that's just because Metagross is such a reliable Pokemon, bulk-wise, uh, it's super strong offensively, and it's able to boost its defenses with the max move. So that's a huge thing going for Metagross in this format. If you're not a fan of Metagross, there are plenty of ways to you know, beat Glacier that don't involve Metagross. Dusclops is a very, very physically defensive Pokemon. 40 HP doesn't seem very good, but when you pair it with a 50% boosted 130 defense stat and 130 special defense, it's very difficult to knock out. I'm sure we've all had issues uh, dealing with Dusclops in the past. It has access to Frisk, which is really good against a Glacier. You can identify if it's running Weakness Policy or Life Orb, which is a huge game changer. You can even identify the possible Assault Vest set, which some of them are running. Trick Room, Bulldoze is standard for activating your own Weakness Policy and whatever money you have it on. Uh, Will-O-Wisp, Nightshade, all of these are very, very good ways to hit Glacier, except for, you know, Bulldoze. Trick Room, you can reverse the Trick Room in the Glacier. Will-O-Wisp, you can burn the Glacier, which is really huge, absolutely stuffing it. If we end up going to a physically defensive Dusclops set, and we face a burned Glacier, no weakness policy, we can see that the Glacier, where's the status? Here it is. The Glacier is going to be doing uh, to a non-Dynamax Dusclops, a little like somewhere under 20% sometimes 21% it's not doing much it's a possible five hit KO so you're able to wall it pretty efficiently um, 
And once the Dynamax ends, it's taking chip from the burn. Uh, your Nightshade is actually going to be doing a decent amount of damage to them. So uh, that's something huge. Dustclops is absolutely huge for the Glacier matchup. If you see a Glacier on Team Preview and you have a Dustclops on your team, I would advise bringing it just because it's super solid versus it. It's able to wall it out. Uh, and the next Pokemon I have is, is pretty common in terms of trying to beat Glacier. It's my you know, custom stack attack a set. I'm running a weakness policy on this guy, but you can also just run a Shookaberry. It's just as good. In fact, a Shookaberry might be even better uh, since it allows you to take those max quakes a lot more comfortably. Weakness policy. Uh, but the reason I'm running weakness policy on mine is because if you're under Trick Room, Stack Attack actually completely destroys Glacier. This thing is so absurdly physically defensive when you Dynamax it that if you go, if you if you like get to plus one physical defense, it goes from being times four weak to um, to Max Quake uh, to the point where it's like, okay, I might as well be resisting this. It's so disgusting. Someone put it that way. It's like, yeah, if you Dynamax and Max Steel Spike, it, it resists ground moves at that point. Um, but yeah, if if we do the math here. Uh, Plus one defense after we get a max steel spike off Dynamax Stagataka versus Dynamax Glacier. The max quake. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh my god, I hate looking at this on paper. It's doing 17 to 20 percent. Why? Why is this allowed? I mean, of course, if we're not Dynamaxed and we don't have, you know, any investment, they're doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, at plus two, they're also going to be doing a lot with max quake. They're just going to one shot us. In fact, so. Stack Attack, a very powerful Pokemon. In fact, I'm so concerned about that being wrong. I need to double check that. I need to double check that. Let me look at that. I have to make sure that this calculator isn't broken. Stack Attack, default set, or Stack Attack. Stack Attack, my custom set, level 50, Brave Nature. Here we go. There we go. Okay, I was curious. Yeah, Max Quake Dynamaxed is doing like 51%. That's that's so gross. The fact that Stack Attack can eat that hit so well. And the fact that at plus two, if they give you your weakness policy at plus two, you have a chance to knock them out just like with the um, the Metagross matchup, but you actually underspeed them under Trick Room. So that's really big. Stack Attack, another great Pokemon for beating Glacier. Uh, Rotom Heat is one of the more common options at the moment. Rotom Heat is very cool in this format. Um, well, you know, not really cool, but Heat. Rotom Heat is very interesting in the format and the fact that it has a positive matchup versus a couple of things. It's able to switch in on Earthquake from Landris. It's able to wall out um, non-dark type move Incineroar. It's able to beat opposing Rotom Heat if you can, you know, set up on them. And it is able to wall Glacier since uh, it levitates. It's not weak to any of the moves Glacier wants to go for. Uh, and it's completely immune or resist two of them. So that's really big. Max Knuckles, their only option for actually hitting you. So you run a Nasty Plot set on this guy. If you end up getting up to plus two, and you Dynamax up and you're able to go for a Max Flare, it has a pretty good chance of one-shotting Glacier even when they're Dynamaxed. And if they're not Dynamaxed, they're not surviving that in any situation. In fact, like, yeah, like Overheat just KOs. Um, it's it's a very bulky Pokemon too, and a Pokemon that likes to run the Citrus Berry, so it's very easy to switch in on Glacier attacks since most of the moves they're going to be using are resisted or completely immune to. Uh, but yeah, Rotom Heat, very good, very reliable Pokemon. As you can see, like the damage it takes from a max Icicle Crash without Dynamaxing is enough to where like the hail will proc your Citrus Berry and then you're able to take another one. So that's pretty big. Yeah, 87% chance to 3 hit KO after Citrus Berry recovery. So you have a chance to even be 4 hit KO technically. That's really big. Uh, I think one of the more important answers to Glacier in this format though has to be Incineroar. And Incineroar is an interesting one because it's not meant to outright beat Glacier as much as it is to be used smart in the situation that you're facing a Dynamax Trick Room Glacier, uh, because it's able to absolutely stuff Glacier given the right board positioning. So if we look at this, uh, Intimidate will send Glacier to minus one attack. As you can see, minus one Max Quake will not KO, minus one Max Knuckle will not KO, and this is non-Dynamax. You'll almost never Dynamax in Incineroar at that. Uh, so what you can do is you can send in your Incineroar, hopefully on like a Max Hailstorm, because then they're only doing like 27%. Uh, and then you're likely able to survive the next hit. You can parting shot out, and after the next hit, you're going to get your Figgy Berry. Uh, and that will send them down to minus two attack, which minus one, it's now minus two because of the Intimidate. Uh, and that just allows you to pivot in something like, I don't know, a 
stack attack or anything that wants to eat the hit. Uh, and that will allow you to get in the incinerator a third time, send them down to minus three after the intimidate. And then they're doing pretty much no damage. So incinerator, given the right board positioning, it's very, very good uh, for beating Glacier. It's able to eat hits because of its absurdly reliable bulk, its ability to intimidate, and the fact that you can build this guy to survive pretty much any one hit. I've had some incinerator survive absolutely absurd hits. I think I had one take like a plus one rock slide from a Tyranitar on stream the other day. I don't know what it was. It was something absurd where I definitely didn't expect to eat the hit. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really it was really good. Incineroar is a very good Pokemon. It's able to stuff a lot of things, beat weakness policy users like this Pokemon. So yeah, you could also try to tech on something like uh, Burning Jealousy Incineroar if you want to run an Assault Vest set. Because let's say you run an Assault Vest set, Max Quake, if they're under Trick Room, uh, they'll hit you. They'll get a plus one special defense boost and then you're able to hit them back with um, burning jealousy since they got the special defense boost you're able to burn them 100 percent of the time barring no misty surge or lumberries so that's a nice little tech move that some people are running on incinerator at the moment which is also just good in general and with the standard counters out of the way i want to get into some pokemon that i personally have had success using on teams to beat glacier and I, you know me i am a i am a polka tuber that runs heat and nothing less so Marowak Alola. This is what I used in my Players Cup 2 run. I did really good. Um, the only time I actually lost to Glacier was crits, <laughs> so that was a little bit annoying. If you remember the video, you you know what I mean. Uh, but Marowak Alola is actually a pretty decent Glacier check when you're using this particular set. As you can see, I'm not running a Brave Nature. I'm actually running a Relaxed Nature, and that's by design. You're actually able to maximize your attack while still leaving the hit from Glacier with 60 defense relaxed and max HP. If we go into the damage calc and look at Marowak Alola with my custom set, you can see that Max Quake, not at minus two, but at neutral, is actually something that we always live. 99%, that's as much as we're taking. Usually we don't take 99% though, so that's nice. Um, and what, that, what that'll allow me to do is pretty much what I said Incinera could do. I'm running a Burning Jealousy Alola Marowak. You could also run Will-O-Wisp if you'd like, but I prefer the Burning Jealousy variant because it overall comes more in handy. Um, you're, you're able to take that max quake, they get the special defense boost, and then you burn them with burning jealousy and their damage is cut for the rest of the game. Of course, that isn't the only thing you could do. This is in Alola Marowak. It hits like a truck. If you want to Dynamax and hit him with a max flare, you're going to be doing 63% to 75%. And as you can see, when you're Dynamax, you're taking less than 50% from them. So if they're not weakness policy, if they're like Life Orb, um, you might beat them depending on the matchup. Outside of Trick Room, you absolutely beat them. Inside of Trick Room, I would personally say go for the burn uh, but it's a very good pokemon i really like it i think that alone merrick is heavily slept on at the moment and i think it has a lot of potential in the format given how common regioleki is how common glacier is there's a lot of things that alone merrick can do in the format and i think it's just a very good pokemon that people should try out more gigalith now i've been running gigalith on a recent team and i think it's extremely slept on in the format for one it's one of the few pokemon that not only beats glacier typing wise but also is slower than it it's not a speed tie like other pokemon it just beats it so if we look at gigalith if we look at gigalith um some people ask why not tyranitar well for one gigalith is slower than glacier under trick room which is really big and two gigalith is not times four weak to max knuckle so that's another thing going for it if we look at this glacier if it goes for a max quake it's doing 36 to 43 percent and at plus two we still live that because it's gigalith and he has absurd physical defense we're running a weakness policy set, so we get up to plus two, and then we're able to drop a max rock fall on it, likely one-shotting it because of sand getting set up after the fact and then it taking more chip damage. So that's one thing going for Gigalith. Um, on top of that, just even non-Dynamaxed, you're able to eat hits from this guy. Look, 86%. That's disgusting. And you're able to hit it with a plus two rock slide. Without Dynamax, it's still doing a solid chunk of damage. So under Trick Room, Gigalith is a major threat within the format, and you can even run it next to another Glacier check. You can run it with Dusclops if you're able to do that speed IV trick that I do when I'm breeding. You see the Dusclops has 27 speed. If you give the Gigalith the right amount of speed IVs, you can outspeed your own Dusclops, allowing you to reliably set up your weakness policy. And you have two Pokemon that absolutely wall Glacier, if not outright beat it. So it's, it's a really good combo. I have not lost to a Glacier the entire time I've ran my Gigalith team, and I think that's a Pokemon a lot of people should try out. Final Pokemon, Buzzwool. Another Pokemon that is kind of heat in the format. Uh, one of the benefits to Buzzwool is the fact that Buzzwool also walls Dark-type Urshifu. I'll show you that calc in a minute. Um, my custom set, there we go. So the set I'm running has a bit of speed, 
it's just enough for 107 Pokemon that are creeping to outspeed like Dragapult or Tailwind. Uh, but if you give him a decent amount of HP and max attack, for one, for one, your close combat already almost one-shots Glacier when it's not Dynamaxed. And when it is Dynamaxed, of course, you know, you're probably just shooting yourself in the foot there. But um, as you can see, when both of these guys are Dynamaxed, Glacier never wins this matchup. Max Hailstorm, 25 to 28% to Buzzwall when he's Dynamaxed, and then your Max Knuckle will just snowball and beat them in the end. On top of that, you don't even have to click Max Knuckle if you don't want to activate their weakness policy, because you can, see, as you can see, if you give them plus two, then they're going to be doing a bit more damage. Still not enough to outright call themselves a Buzzwall check, but Buzzwall is absurdly strong, man. Like, this guy is able to wall the heck out of Glacier, and is actually really cool in the format with um, the fact that it just got access to things like Bounce or Dual Wing Beat for Max Airstream. Overall, it's a really cool Pokemon, and I think some people should uh, try to run it on their team as an alternate to Urshifu. Speaking of which, Urshifu, uh, Picolytic set. Let's give this guy the standard set they're running right now. I believe they're like Jolly Cho Jolly. I believe they're Jolly Choice Band. So give this man a Choice Band. Do you want to see how much this guy does? How much this guy does, right? Wicked Blow is doing 28 to 33 percent to Buzzwool. How much is your close combat doing back? Literally almost twice their health. 134 percent to 161. That that is so much close combat. They're an equally strong move doing nothing and then you one shot them back i think with leech life if you wanted to because yeah because they're at minus one defense not one shot but you have a solid chance of like two shotting them with, with leech life this is a really cool pokemon i think buzz will slept on right now so yeah um that's pretty much my list of pokemon that you can use to reliably bleat bleat to reliably beat glacier bleat like it's a goat no glacier is a goat He's the goat, but he's actually a horse. Uh, so yeah, these are the Pokemon that can reliably beat Glacier if you decide to put them on a team in any given matchup. And then the other list of Pokemon, these three are just my heat picks if you want to try out something new. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. I appreciate every one of your support. Every one of you viewers is support. I'm sorry, it's late and I don't know how to talk. I should wrap up the video. But thank you all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.